My first memories of Zeri are associated with the year 1959, although he appeared in our family much earlier. But namely, I remember the summer of 59 because Anatoly used to live in our dacha during that time. Tolly would paint without getting tired, without any strain. He couldn't live without this passion. Painting and Zveri were one and the same. Within one day, he was able to create tens of drawings, mostly gouache, watercolor, tempera, sometimes oil. It was hard to believe how he managed to create such a number of stunningly beautiful work in such a short amount of time. Once my father gave Tolia the idea to try and draw something in the suprematistic style, Zverev liking the idea and got to work. Tolia didn't have a workshop, so most of, of his masterpieces we were born at my father's apartment on Vernadsk Avenue. Tolle's performances always attracted a large audience. Everyone who was in the apartment would take part in his show. The room that was set aside for the workshop would be carefully prepared. The floor would be draped in plastic with newspaper sheets laid on top. Furniture and everything else in the room would also be covered. A large sheet of Watman paper would be placed on top of the newspapers. We would set up buckets and pans of water, open numerous cans of gouaches of various colors and prepare brushes and palette knives. Tolly would soak a large brush in water, then take gouache of solid color from the can and splash all of this beauty on the sheet of already soaking wet Watman paper. Then he would rinse the brush in the first, the second, then third pan, cleaning it off completely. Next came the second color, which would partially overlap the previous one, then the third and so on. It seemed like someone was directing his hand. It was some kind of magic. Having finished splashing the gouache, he would pick up smaller brushes and palette knives. And within several moments, gather all this chaos into a single hole. First the eyes, then the nose and the lips would appear, finally the outline of the face. First the eyes, then the nose and the lips would appear. Finally, the outline of the face. And an image of the person posing for him was looking at us. It was fantastic. The similarity would reveal itself within seconds. Thus, the portrait was complete one model after the other, and so on. After the act, everyone having enjoyed himself would be invited to the table by the hostess of the house, my mother Zina, my father's beloved wife, whom he affectionately called Zolotka. Zverev used to paint lots of portraits and often visited the zoo, where he would draw pictures of animals. Tolia liked the open air and used to travel. As a result of these trips, amazing landscapes with churches and pines started to appear within his work. In general, Zverev mastered many painting techniques. Among them were oil, watercolors, gouache, tempera, as well as all kinds of materials for graphic work, sanguine ink, pencil, and so on. He would use anything that came to hand and apply paint instead of a brush. Even a piece of bread, a cigarette butt, rose petals, cereals, flour, or salt would get into his work. Numerous 
self-portraits appeared during this crea creative period, depicting his transformation from a young boy to an elderly man with wisdom in life. Zverev didn't look in the mirror while painting himself. In 1977, our Dutch in Bakovka caught fire. Everything that had been hanging on the walls was burned. Pictures, icons, basically the whole house. Some of the drawing that had been stored in folders and got charred at the edges were preserved. Beginning 1979, most of my family left Russia, while my husband and I stayed in Moscow. During that time, Tolia Zverev would continue to visit us. He'd always show up unannounced, as in the year of knowing him, he had become our own. Having his alcohol addiction in mind, my husband and I decided not to keep any alcohol in the house. Sometimes Valodia would get a couple of bottles of beer for him. Once when I asked him, Tolia, why didn't you finish your bottle of beer? He replied, I always finish it. You don't drink, so why should hurry? He replied, I always finish it. You don't drink, so why should I hurry? Generally, Tolia was very warm towards my family and I. He once said that he understood who is who well and appreciates good and selfless relationship. After my parents' departure, the question of the apartment renovation arose. It had not been renovated since the family had moved in. The doors were tattered and the kitchen cabinets were in very poor shape. So one day Tolia came over and I said to him, Tolia, I can't look at this mess. Would you please paint them? He agreed without a second thought. First, Tolia painted the doors of the three-part cabinet. A hen with a flock of chickens appeared, followed by a rooster, and finally a graceful fox with a fluffy tail. On the upper cabinet doors, a church rose against the backdrop of a landscape. The addition of these pieces of art immediately transformed the kitchen. It came to life demanding further decorating, but the rest wouldn't happen immediately. Toilet would periodically come over and draw portraits of us. Two years later, it would be time for the bench and dining table in the kitchen. The long, narrow baking boards of the bench set the theme themselves, galloping horses. In addition, Tolio had painted the tabletop on which he depicted a horse with a naked woman. Next in the line was a small coffee table on which a portrait of myself found its place. Finally took on the doors to the rooms. Tolia had painted my daughter Dasha with myself on one of them. Pine trees, a cliff and a horse on the other. The doors had been painted by him, squeezing paint straight out of the tubes. The painting turned out to be embossed. The thin tips of the strokes had to dry for a long time. In the same period, we asked Tolle to paint our family portrait. We cut off a large piece from a roll of primate canvas. In the same period, we asked Tolle to paint our family portrait. We cut off a large piece from a roll of canvas. Tolle put it on the table, smoothed it out with his palm and began to create. The first strokes were quick and the portrait would start to resemble us very closely as he continued to apply the paint to the canvas. Then he'd look up and squint towards the distance, then back at us sitting there breathless. 
He then applied bright colors to the canvas again. This continued until he said, done, baby. Anatoly's very last work concerning the decoration of our house was a painting on a door with a glass and lay that led to my workshop. There he depicted a giraffe with flowers, leaves, and wines on the frame around the glass, while a beautiful peacock appeared on the glass itself. This door looks amazing when lit from behind. My father visited Moscow during the fall of 1986 to attend the exhibition on the contribution of Tretikov Gallery. One evening, Tolia Zverev came over. We had long conversations. My father would praise him, mentioning that he liked the work that Tolia had done in our house, concluding that he was wrong in believing that Zverev was exhausted in his later work. Tolia's fingers were twisted because he was suffering from chronic rheumatoid arthritis. He couldn't hold the brush in his hand for long periods of time while working. He'd sometimes shake his hand as if that gesture would relieve the unbearable pain he was under. In 1989, a posthumous exhibition of Zverev's work was held in Moscow. The exhibition was very interesting and worried revealing all of his talent. Alexei Sasna, the director of Zverev Cultural Center in 2005, suggested to organize a joint exhibition on Anatoly Zverev and Natalia Kostaki. I was thrilled and honored to have my work shown in the same space of the work of this astonishing artist. Another exhibition of Zverev work from our collection took place at the Atkriti Club Gallery on Spiridonovka Street in Moscow. Around 30 fire-damaged drawings were shown there, which I preserved myself with love and care, reinforced the edges of the burned sheets and pasted them on Michelin paper. Another large exhibition took place in the Great Hall of the New Manege in 2012, called very on Fire, showing more of the restored pieces. The organizer of this exhibition was Natalia Opaliva, founder of the Anatoly Zverev Museum. It was received very well by the visitors, the press and television. The wonderful layout of all the catalogs containing the works shown at the exhibitions of our collection were designed by my daughter, Daria Zajarei. We have some plans regarding the organization of themed exhibitions of art by Anatoly Zverev. Alas, due to the pandemic, they cannot be realized yet, but we do not lose hope.